What's going on everybody? Brad and Greta Zood, Parenting with the Zoods. And on this episode, we're gonna talk about how to get your kids to clean. That's right, if you have kids, they should be doing their part and we're gonna show you exactly how to get your kids to clean up. It's possible if you're listening to this on the podcast. Welcome, so excited to have you. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Leave us a five-star review, it'd mean the world. And you can also head on over to YouTube where we're live in studio where you get to see myself and the beautiful and fabulous Miss Greta. Um, if this is your first time joining us, we're number one best-selling parenting authors with eight children of our own. And we have eight children that we try to get to clean. Well... Well, not the not three all month old. Not all. <laughs> not yet. Yeah, so we've got a 12 year old and then all the way down the pike to Miss Aubrey, who is three and a half ish months. Just three. Almost four months old. No, so. no, no. She just turned three. Just turned three. Just turned three. Just turned Keep three. Keep up. I know it's hard. And uh, yeah, and so here's the deal at our house um, our house would fall apart even seemingly more than it does if we did not constantly clean and have assigned chores and try to harmoniously row the boat in one direction so we're not rowing the boat in circles. Um, it's kind of like that meme, you know, it's like li living in a house with kids is like brushing your teeth while eating Oreos or picking up or... Yes. Something, something. Brushing along. your teeth while eating Oreos. That's really good. That's yeah. a really good one. It, it's just like this constant clutter and constant mess. And sometimes they're careless and it gets crazy. And other times it's just, hey, life, right? And one of the things I'm thankful for is, you know, the culture of our home is that, um, you know, we want to be neat and tidy because those are skills that we want to teach our children not because like, oh, we want to live in this sterile museum of a house. You know, our, our home is... We live in it. We live in it, mm -hmm. right? And, and we do things. And you can't, we do things. You can't sacrifice the things because you want a clean house. Yeah. And we fall into that trap sometimes. Sure. You know, there's, there's certainly a, a ditch, as we say. Um, and that because... It, wow, we like clean things like we're we're we lean towards clean freaks um which by the way shout out to one of our favorite youtube channels clean freaks and germaphobes definitely go check those out those are uh two fabulous ladies uh who have a wonderful cleaning channel so if you're a clean freak and you're a germaphobe you need to go check out okay, the channel pause for a second pause for a second you've come a long way you've come a long way into the clean the clean freak do you remember, do you remember when we met, how you organized your clothes? Do you remember how you used no. to keep your clothes? You well, don't did even I, how remember. Did I, how did I keep them? Yeah, I, well, I remember in your, um, in your condo, you had piles. Piles. And, you're, and you, <laughs> you're like, I don't know what pile this is, and you'd smell it. Oh, yeah, you like, got to do the smell test. Is this the clean pile or the dirty pile? You didn't even, you didn't even bother to, like, hang your clothes up I, or fold them you or, know, or put them away. You just had the, all these piles, and some of the piles... Were actually, they had like black garbage bags. It's I, like you had your clothes I, and garbage I didn't, bags. I didn't. I was a single college guy. I didn't. <laughs> I didn't really have. I know the the, the just, domestic skills. I'm just saying you've come a long way. You've come a long way. I definitely needed a helpmate suitable. You did in that area. You did to come and completely complete so, me. Excuse me. Whenever, whenever I'm discouraged about our children, like and their diligence in which only up. happens every day uh, whenever i get discouraged i just think about i think about you and they're still one step still, ahead of their father still, at least they're not as bad as their no, father i actually i actually think of me uh, and myself <laughs> and how how lazy i was mm. and my mother didn't like she didn't require that much of me and she's like just fold these clothes while you watch tv you know, just fold these towels while you watch TV. And two hours later, she'd be like, what have you been doing? I've been watching TV. <laughs> Commercial breaks. Just fold the towels. <laughs> and it wasn't hard. And it took like three minutes to fold all the towels. But, and now I'm, I'm a very diligent homemaker. 
And I think there is hope for my children. Mm-hmm. So it's interesting because it, it, it kind of, you know, how to get your kids to clean. So it, it kind of, it breaks down to a couple different, couple different things. So um, the skill of knowing what to do is one thing. Um, diligence in applying that skill mm-hmm. is another thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, w- whenever we're talking about training our children, there's training and then there's discipline. Okay, so training is you, mom and dad, showing your child in a time of non-conflict, so not in the, in the heat of the argument or whatever, in a time of non-conflict, what you want them to do. And then once you know full well <laughs> that you've done it with them enough times that they know what to do, then you enter into a discipline phase of, hey, listen, I know you know how to do this and you didn't do it. So then it then it kind of turns into the more of the diligence stage. And that's really most of the time what you end up fighting is the diligence portion of things. Mm-hmm. Um, because honestly... You know, everyone's like, "Whoa, what age and stage and like, what, what's a good, what's a good thing for my four-year-old to be doing and, and that kind of stuff. And it's like, it, it, it depends on those things depend on the amount of obedience and, and discipline, um, and training that there are inside of the home on a specific issue. But kids can do way more things than most parents give them credit for. Mm -hmm. I mean, So, for example, in our home, due to a lot of training, which, again, my argument is most, if not all, children can do this, but how how young are our kids that do their own laundry? Um, Well, completely on their own. Our just-turned seven-year-old does it completely. Our three- and our five-year-old, they do their laundry with, you know, some... I mean, our three-year-old puts his laundry in the washer and starts yeah he can do that yeah and he knows how to fold clothes so i'm i help him along with that you know and uh but 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 he is a he is a major major 90 percent participant in that and you Mm -hmm. are the supporting character sure at best Mm -hmm. and so and so we're like wow like some of you can't even imagine a world where your three-year-old does their own laundry right but but it's about culture you know it's about it's about creating that culture inside of your home but it's about okay you know prior to that we've got we've got um we have obedience so we can call his name and sit and train and he can stand still and learn and all those sorts of things and all those basic things always precede um skills right so um you know, plug for our program. We've got the most amazing toddler program in the world in the description. It's 50% off. You have to go get it. It's pennies a day. Um, and and you have to have a child's discipline, you know, it takes discipline to do that. But then when you do that, it, it's, it's easy. So talk about, do we, do we give rewards? Is there allowance? Mm -hmm. Do if they, when they get in trouble, do they do more chores? Right, so break some of that down. So I want to start back with the culture that you kind of talked about, and mm-hmm. and I think that that the beginning of all of that starts out with the culture of work is good. Like mm. this is we are here to work. Mm-hmm. You know, we're not here to get our work done and play. Like <laughs> I, God put us on this earth to work to I, to take dominion and subdue the earth and that's mm-hmm. what we're here to do. Mm-hmm. And um, and so if we have an attitude about work that's grumpy and and complaining and um, our kids are going to have that same attitude about work, um, about doing the chores. Um, so that being said, they start out really young being our helpers and it's it's fun, you know, it's, it's a good time. Now, it's funny because once you make that transition to you're the helper into this is your responsibility now. This is your domain. Then you have kind of this breakdown of like, I don't want to be responsible. Um, and in our house, there aren't, we don't have allowance. Chores are just what you do because you're a part of this family. Mm-hmm. And we all work together. And and it helps children fit into the family. They know their place. They know specific ways that they can help. And they they literally, at a, it, 
th there's a time with a two-year-old or something like that where you you let them put the silverware away in the drawer and kind of fiddle fart around or whatever and it's cute and it, and it's training them and sure but like you have children in our family that are very young that are legitimately pulling some of their weight mm -hmm. and and th and nothing makes them feel more special than than um doing important work you know it's it's the number one like like surveying people in the workplace right it's it's more than pay more than vacation it's that everyone wants to feel valued and do important work that's the number one thing people look for in a job and at the workplace because we as humans um we want to fit in and belong and contribute and feel important and that that desires in children very early mm-hmm Yep. So do they get an allowance? Do we give our kids an allowance? Yeah, no allowance. No allowance. They're just part of the family. Um, there really aren't rewards for normal everyday chores. Sometimes we'll put like a carrot out there for like skills that they're learning, like mm -hmm. uh, like mowing the lawn. Mm -hmm. So to learn how to do that. I mean, that was, and it's a hot summer on a push <laughs> mower with a big yard. And mm -hmm. that's tough. And so mm -hmm. for that first summer... Um, sometimes there's like, you know what, if at the end of the summer, you might mm, get something that you have been wanting, um, right. something like that. But for normal everyday chores, no, there's not. And, and like you said, we do give them opportunities to earn some extra money, you know, so, you know, cleaning and vacuuming out the car is not someone's weekly chore. And sometimes we offer that up for, you know, a little, a quarter. Uh, so a little, <laughs> a little bit of money, you know, sometimes weed pulling we do, but like today, even, you know, we pulled weeds and it was just part of what we were yep. going to do today. And yep. everyone was out there and mm -hmm. it's just helping the house. Right. Um, but, um, in teaching them skills, then like with the lawn, for example, we go out and we have neighbor clients and that's how they earn money. We teach them skills here. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, we're showing them, hey, we're going to teach you that, you know, unlike even a college that would make you pay to learn these skills. <laughs> and then you can go out and perform those skills. So like growing flowers, you know, we've talked about in some of our other podcasts, you know, where we've given our girls that skill, but then they can go out and they can make a couple hundred bucks in an afternoon selling flowers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's much more fulfilling that way. Um, they feel much more I don't know, responsible or much more um, that they created, uh, they take ownership of that. Um, so we don't give an allowance. And sometimes as a punishment, sometimes they'll, you know, if they're slow to clean or something like that, they'll they'll lose some privilege or they may have to clean more, um, Right. you know, as they come up. Uh, okay, so we can talk about some of the mm, practical logistical things. I'm way off camera here. I need to snuggle up. Um, so one of the things that we use all the time in our house is a timer, mm. and that is a good, we a good. We have so just, many timers. We in have our so house. many timers. They're <sighs> floating around everywhere, and we just have them everywhere so we can be like, okay, you know, and and that's a. It's not so much like you need to get this chore done in five minutes. Mm -hmm. It's more like, hey guys. Let's set a goal, and we're going to have breakfast cleaned up in 10 minutes, dishes done, everything swept, put away, and and it's that, okay, you know, it's that goal. And goals, I think, are really good mm -hmm. um, to set. Otherwise, you kind of lollygag. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, when you say, you know, the, um, you know, one of the worst things you can say to your children is hurry up, right? So we have to give them a sense of time. Mm -hmm. And... We all know most adults, or some adults, and we may even be that adult that lacks a sensible sense of time. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, five minutes. Oh, five more minutes. Or I'll be there in five minutes or whatever. And it's like 25 minutes, right? So we can set the timer and teach them, hey, five minutes. And it's it's just a guide to keep them on track. Right. And I think that that's motivating for them, too, to see like, wow, what we, look at what we accomplished mm -hmm. in that amount of time. And a lot of times they'll they'll beat the timer and it's a really huge sense of accomplishment. Mm -hmm. Uh, another thing that, uh, I remember we learned, we were at a conference and, um, this guy was talking about starting a mowing business, uh, with children. And I remember him talking about like setting, setting goals, um, for the amount of work and not for the time. So, um, this sounds like I'm contradicting myself here, but it's not. Um, so, for example, like weeding today. 
I didn't set out and say, okay, you can take a break after you've been working for one hour. Because they could do a lot of things in one hour and not do their work, right? But if I say, you can take a break after you get this section of the flower beds done, then it then doesn't matter if they get it done in one hour or if they get it yep. done in 10 minutes, you know, yep. they've, they've accomplished the work. Yep. And, um, so kids will wait, wait it out. Oh, for sure. Like, oh, I just yeah, especially wait. if you're a rescuer and you come in and you start to do that. I mean, if you're, if your child is characterized by being slow, chances are you're a rescuer and you end up getting frustrated and then eventually going to do it, do for, it for your them. child mm -hmm. and they will gladly wait it out while you come and bail them out yes. of what they need to yes. do. And today, um, my my girls wanted to go to a tea party with their neighbor friends, and I said, "Well, we have to get the we have to get all of the front yard weeded um, yep. before you get to go." And you better betcha, they, they were. were they were moving and shaking uh, so that they could go to the yep. tea party. Yeah, a lot of times after dinner, you know, we'll we'll um, sidebar. We live our life in like giving instructions to our family every 10 minutes of our life. Like, here's what the next 10 minutes is going to look like. Here's what the next 10 minutes look like. But like after dinner, we'll say, all right, here's the plan for dinner. We need to clean up. We're going to do family worship. And then we can watch, you know, two YouTube videos. But we're going to for sure do family worship. But the more you dwaddle now cleaning up dinner, the less time we'll have to watch Matt Stoney eat two pounds of Sour Patch Kids, <laughs> one of our favorite YouTubers, by the way, shout out to Matt Stoney. And, um, so it, it, it helps them, it helps them, um, you know, put a weight or, or something up against their dwaddling, right? They, they, they understand like, Hey, it's the choice is yours. I'm putting the ball mm -hmm. in your court. Mm -hmm. You be the judge, you know, choose your adventure, Batman. And, um, that just, we want them to take as much ownership of, of those things mm -hmm. as we can. Yeah. So, and, and lastly, I just want to say, the you can have the best laid out chore plan. You can you can buy the best chore plan book and and we have and them have all the right. The system. rings and the pictures. Oh and yeah, the, you know I've tried lots of things. And you can have the checklists and laminate them and post them and pin them to their kids' shirts. Pin them to your shirts, wearing them as a necklace. <laughs> um, you can do it all, but really, and I don't even know I don't even know where I heard this term, but I heard it years and years ago. But the only way to make sure that your kids do what they need to do is that you inspect it. Inspect mm -hmm. what you expect. Inspect what you expect. It's not done so, till we double check. You know what? Our kids will come down every day and we'll say, did you clean your room? Yep. Yep. All clean. Yep. Not a towel on the floor. <laughs> and Not a book in sight. <laughs> And when you see it, it's a much different, it's a much different story. And, and then we just get to have the lying conversation. Right, right. So, um, so it, it requires that, you know what, they know that we are going to, we are going to be um, inspecting mm -hmm. and that keeps them accountable. Yep. But if you just ask them, you know, and they know that you're not really going to check. The lies will fly. <laughs> These are just out of their mouth. Yep. Yep. It's so, crazy. So inspect what you expect. Yeah. So hopefully that, uh, you know, jogged your memory. Hopefully you got a couple of good ideas. Hopefully, um, if you're wondering how to get your kids to clean, that clarifies things. But let us know in the comments below if you have questions, um, if, uh, you know, what you're doing, what ages and what stages and all that kind of stuff. We'd love to hear uh, your comments in the comment section below. So do that. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. And you can watch some of our other toddler uh, chore and discipline videos here. And uh, we'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye.